I found that nothing in life is worthwhile unless you take risks. Nothing. Nelson Mandela said, there is no passion to be found playing small and settling for a life that's less than the one you're capable of living. Now, I'm sure in your experiences in school and applying to college and picking your major and deciding what you want to do with life, I'm sure people have told you to make sure you have something to fall back on. Make sure you got something to fall back on, honey. But I never understood that concept, having something to fall back on. If I'm going to fall, I don't want to fall back on anything except my faith. I want to fall forward. I figure at least this way I'll see what I'm going to hit. Fall forward. This is what I mean. Reggie Jackson struck out 2,600 times in his career, the most in the history of baseball. But you don't hear about the strikeouts. People remember the home runs. Fall forward. Thomas Edison conducted 1,000 failed experiments. Did you know that? I didn't know that. Because the 1,001st was the light bulb, fall forward. Every failed experiment is one step closer to success. You've got to take risks, and I'm sure you've probably heard that before, but I want to talk to you about why that's so important. I got three reasons, and then you can pick up your iPhones. First, you will fail at some point in your life. Accept it. You will lose. You will embarrass yourself. You will suck at something. There's no doubt about it. And I know that's probably not a traditional message for a graduation ceremony, but hey, I'm telling you, embrace it, because it's inevitable, and I should know. In the acting business, you fail all the time. Early on in my career, I auditioned for a part in a Broadway musical. Perfect role for me, I thought, except for the fact that I can't sing. So I'm, I'm in the wings, I'm about to go on stage, but the guy in front of me, he's singing like, like, like Pavarotti. He's just... It's just going on and on and on. And I'm doing it. shrinking I'm getting smaller and smaller so they say oh thank you very much thank you very much and uh, you'll we'll, we'll, we'll be hearing from us so I, I come out with my little sheet music and it, it, it was it was uh, just my imagination by the temptations that's what I came up with so I hand it to the the, the, the accompanist and uh, she looks at it and looks at me and looks out at the director and was like Hi. so I, I start you know I, I'm, I'm gonna sing I'm like this is my once again and then coming away with me and I'm not saying anything so I'm thinking I'm getting better so I, I just start getting into it it was just <laughs> running this oh yeah, uh, thank, yeah thank, thank you thank you thank you very much Mr. Washington thank you so I assumed I didn't get the job but the next part of the audition he called me back the next part of the audition is the acting part of the audition so I'm like hey okay maybe I can't sing but I know I can act so they pair me with this guy and again I didn't know about musical theater and musical theater is big so they can reach everyone all the way in the back of the, of the stadium and I'm more from a realistic uh, naturalistic kind of acting where you you know you actually talk to the person next to you so I, I don't know what my line was my line was well hand me the cup and his line was well I will hand you the cup my dear the cup will be there to be handed to you I, I said Oh, okay. <laughs> well, should I give you the cup back? Oh, yes, you should give it back to me because you know that is my cup and it should be given back to me. I didn't get the job. But here's the thing. I didn't quit. I didn't fall back. I walked out of there to prepare for the next audition and the next audition and the next audition. I prayed. I prayed and I prayed. But I continued to fail and fail and fail. But it didn't.
because you know what? There's an old saying, you hang around the barbershop long enough, sooner or later you're going to get a haircut. So you will catch a break, and I did catch a break. Last year, I did a play called Fences on Broadway, so someone talked about it. Won the Tony Award, I, and I didn't have to sing, by the way. <laughs> but here's the kicker, it was at the court theater. It was at the same theater that I failed that first audition 30 years prior. On the first day, God created the dog. God said, sit all day by the door of your house and bark at anybody that comes by. I'll give you a lifespan of 20 years. The dog said, that's too long to be barking. Give me 10 years, I'll give you back the other 10. And God agreed. On the second day, God created a monkey. God said, entertain people, do monkey tricks, make them laugh. I'll give you a 20 year lifespan. The monkey said, how boring, monkey tricks for 20 years? I don't think so. The dog gave you back 10 years, so that's what I'll do too, okay? And God agreed. On the third day, God created the cow. God said, you must go out in the field with the farmer all day long, suffer under the sun, have calves, give milk to support the farmer. I'm gonna give you a lifespan of 60 years. The cow said, that's kind of a tough life. You want me to live for 60 years? Let me have 20, I'll give you back the other 40. God agreed. On the fourth day, God created man. God said, eat, sleep, play, marry, enjoy your life. I'll give you 20 years. Man said, what? Only 20 years? I'll tell you what. I'll take the 10 years that the dog gave you back and the 10 years that the monkey gave you back and, and the 40 years that the, the, cow, the cow gave you back. That makes 80 years, okay? Okay, God said, you've got a deal. So that is why the first 20 years of our lives, we eat, sleep, play, enjoy ourselves. For the next 40 years, we slave in the sun to support our family. For the next 10 years, we do monkey tricks to entertain the grandchildren. For the last 10 years, we sit on the front porch and we bark at everybody that goes by. <laughs> You've just had life. explain to you there is no shortage of motivational events and courses seminars quotes memes you name it don't get me wrong motivation has its purpose but discipline is a far greater asset on your path to accomplishing big things in your life where motivation falls short discipline picks up the slack today I am joined by a man that needs no introduction Jocko Willink to talk about connecting future ambitions with present actions why every man must find his mission, how to overcome fear and procrastination, and his mantra, discipline equals freedom. If you want freedom, then you need to have discipline, and discipline equals freedom, and that is where it came from. I mean, it's obvious when anyone starts to implement discipline in their lives that their lives get better. Sure. And you see that on every level, from the way they handle their finances, to their physical conditioning, to their actual internal health, to the way they do their job, to the way they, you know, take care of their family. When, when you live a disciplined life, you, you do better across the board. One of my classic ways that I explained this to my, to my son was when we were walking down the street, you know, we saw some guy that was clearly a bum, probably addicted to drugs and alcohol, clearly homeless. And, you know, I mean, I feel bad for the guy, but at the same time, I explained to my son that this guy made decisions along the way that he thought he was going to free himself. He was just going to, you know, I'm not going to work. I'm not going to go to that job. I'm not going to show up on time. I'm going to do whatever I want. And I'm going to, I'll do whatever I want. I'll drink this alcohol. I'll do these drugs. I'll, I'll, I don't need to pay the rent on time. You know, I'll just do whatever I want. I'll be free. And, and now, like you said, he's a slave. He's a slave that has nowhere to live. He's a slave to the weather. He's a slave to trying to beg for food 
food and for for water and for medical attention. He's a slave to people that are willing to give him things as opposed to owning things and making things happen for himself. So I think. That's a, the, the, the strongest example of where total freedom results in, you know, a devastated life is if you look at many, many people that have lost their way, lost their path in life, and they end up, you know, addicted to drugs and alcohol and living on the streets because they have had no discipline. Let's define the, the word freedom. When you, when you say freedom, what are you experiencing in your life and what do you mean that other people can experience in their lives when you're talking about freedom? Well, freedom is the broad term for me that encompasses being able to do what you want primarily. <laughs> Number one is being able to do what you want. and. And the more discipline you have in your life, the more you will be able to do what you want. And, and that's not true initially. Initially, the discipline, it, it might be things that you don't want to do at the time. Sure. But the, the more you do things that you don't want to do, the, the more you do the right things, the better off you will the better off you will be and the more freedom you will have. So again, the, the, the classic examples that I talk about all the time are financial freedom, number one, because if you want to have financial freedom, what you need to have is financial discipline. And the more you, the, the more attention you pay to how you spend your money and the more disciplined you are in, in saving money and not buying things that you don't need, the better off and the more financial freedom you are going to have. The other one that I talk about all the time because everyone understands it is free time. Everyone wants to have more free time. And if you want to have more free time, there's only one real way to get there and that's to have more disciplined time management. Not only creating a schedule of what it is you want to do during a day and then sticking that to that schedule, but also saying no to things that don't benefit you in any way. Saying no to things that aren't going to help you improve as a human being. Saying no to spending an hour and 47 minutes watching stupid YouTube videos <laughs> that are actually taking you backwards mentally. Yeah. Those are the kind of things you need to say no to if you want to have more free time.